we didn't believe that we would be killed because there were so many people and I couldn't believe that they could kill all of us. Srebrenica, the setting for Europe's worst atrocity since the Second World War. In July 1995, Bosnian Serb soldiers massacred thousands of unarmed Muslim men and boys here. A small number of survivors have since returned. I had nightmares and I, that I didn't um, ever get rid of it. Returning here and living here maybe is a therapy for me. But the genocide verdicts of the International Court are being questioned by local politicians and the town's new mayor, even here in the very place where ethnic cleansing happened. The genocide didn't happen. That's official politics. Nejad Avdic now finds his incredible story of survival, his community's very identity, a matter of dispute. Almost 20 years I was silent. Later, I realized that uh, we have to struggle for the truth, like for our life. Nejad Avdic returned to Srebrenica 10 years ago. He and his wife Elvisa are bringing up their three daughters here in Republika Srpska, the Serb-run entity within Bosnia-Herzegovina that was formally recognized after the war, but which some Bosnian Muslims or Bosniaks believe entrenched ethnic cleansing. Nejad is one of its believed only six men and boys who survived being rounded up, taken to mass execution sites and shot in July 1995. 8,000 didn't. I had a need deeply inside me to, to come here to show them that I survived. <laughs> Maybe it is uh, the best answer uh, to all those who deny the genocide, and uh, it, it is a revenge. Nejad's decision to live in Srebrenica is cathartic and political, aimed at those who wanted Muslims erased from here. He says it's increasingly difficult. Life here is not easy. Today we, uh, we fight for, for justice. It uh, isn't finished. Without justice, there is no Reconciliation, it's illusion. I'm worried because of uh, discourse and uh, rhetoric uh, everywhere. You have propaganda and uh, because of that my wife, she just wants to, to leave Srebrenica. There are different realities here in Republika Srpska. Many Bosnian Serbs see men deemed war criminals as heroes. When the political second-in-command from the war days was released from prison, he was fated. <laughs> One person's nationalism is another's rightful pride in their country. And with international eyes focused elsewhere, Bosniaks fear the tide is turning. In a recent referendum, Bosnian Serbs voted overwhelmingly for their annual national day, which the country's courts had ruled illegal. And Bosnian Serb politicians from President Dodik down don't accept international court verdicts concerning Trebrenica. <laughs> In the last few years, maybe two or three, we have more and more of this here. The tension, the destruction of our basic rights, our daily needs, our activities, where we can do anything that we can do, that we can do it. The Twenty-two years ago, the Serbs was a place of fear. With Bosnian Serbs, Croats and Muslims killing each other across the region, the UN had declared the town a safe haven back in 1993, and thousands of Bosniak civilians flocked there. In amongst them were a young Elvisa and, separately, 17-year-old Nejad. Besieged by the Bosnian Serbs, they were abandoned by the UN in July 1995. Agreeing to transport the refugees to safety, Bosnian Serb forces captured the town. Elvisa and her mother, with the other women and children, were bussed out. 
the Bosnian Serb plan to kill the Muslim men and boys was underway. As you watched those pictures, do you remember the feeling? Yes, everything. It's painful to, to remember that, but it's part of life, past, our past. Ahead of the killings, the leader of the Bosnian Serb forces, General Ratko Mladic, made great play of promising civilians safe passage. He's now facing genocide charges at his trial in The Hague. The killing of Srebrenica's Bosnian Muslims has been judged genocide by the War Crimes Tribunal in The Hague. The UN definition is the intent to destroy a group of people based on nationality, race, ethnicity or religion. It was systematic killing. We were organized killing and uh, it was organized by from higher level to achieve all that. You need so many res resources to use it. So many trucks, so many buses, so many uh, loader and uh, etc. The scars of war are still evident in Srebrenica today. This was a predominantly Muslim town, but many who survived those times chose not to come back to a place the international community had agreed would be part of the Bosnian Serb entity Republika Srpska. There's a feeling of emptiness, of once thriving industries that never recovered. Economically depressed, life here is hard. Many eke out a living in a way that has changed little over centuries. Last year, the town elected a new mayor who's promised economic development. It's the first time a Serb has filled the role since the war. His views on the Srebrenica massacre have caused alarm amongst Bosniaks who've returned. For me, it, it's not a problem to have a mayor who is a Serb. It's not a problem. We are looking for that Serb who promotes tolerance. He, he's a guy who, who denies uh, our past, who denies the genocide. The Balkans have always been a powder keg, and now the agreements that brought about the end of the war are looking ever more fragile. There's increasing talk of Republika Srpska breaking away from the rest of Bosnia, which would leave the entity's Bosnian Muslims living in a potentially hostile country. Republika Srpska's President Dodik unveiled a university dormitory in honour of the former President Radovan Karadzic just a few days before the Hague War Crimes Court found Karadzic guilty of genocide. The new mayor of Srebrenica is from the same political party as Mr Dodik. Do you believe Radovan Karadzic is a hero? Ba, verujem. Iz razloga što da nije bilo Radovana Karadzica u mirnodopskom, dakle pre rata, kada je stvorena Republika Srpska, vjerovatno ne bi postala više Republika Srpska i vjerovatno bi se bili, bili tragični e, ra, sukobi i pogubni po srpski narod kada, kada su u pitanju ovih prostora, odnosno ovaj prostor Republike Srpske. Do you accept the judgment of the international court that genocide happened in Srebrenica? Ne. E, slažem se da je, to sam uvijek i govorio, slažem se da je, da je bio zločin, ali kvalifikacija je sporna. Genocid, kvalifikacija genocida je sporna. Imamo i predstavnike Vlade Republike Srpske, imamo predstavnike i Srbije koji nikada nisu rekli da je to bio genocid, nego jedan strašan zločin koji treba da se dokaže i da istina osrednica nije dokazana. Dakle, ja zastupam isti taj stav i isto tako znam da je na isti način ubijan i srpski narod, ali se nije okarakterisalo kao genocid. Nedjad took us on the journey he did back in 1995, then as a prisoner, crammed into a truck with dozens of others, their hands tied behind their backs. And that's the place where mass execution took place. It was n night and uh, shooting and firing outside. 
I could see the lines and lines of, and rows and rows of that body. I knew it was the end really at that moment. They ordered us to, to lay down and uh, I just thought, oh, my mother would never, <laughs> never know where I ended up, how I finished and uh, <laughs> then they started a fire and uh, I was dying and uh, I just uh, could hear moans, <laughs> moans of other people who, who, who were wounded. It was uh, so painful, I, I just uh, prayed to the God to die. But then, then I noticed uh, someone was moving in front of me and uh, I saw, and I asked him, are you alive? He said, yes, yes, I, I, I'm alive, come and tie me. That's enough. <laughs> no. Yeah, I can, I can show you something else. But before security could c come. We'd asked a lot of Nejad, the horror playing out in his head as he described escaping with the other survivor while the soldiers went to collect more prisoners to kill. I was crawling, I was crawling over the dead bodies, bodies it was horror, horror. the broken heads, or etc. It, it, it was. Uh, uh, <laughs> Nejad was badly wounded and in terrible pain. The other man encouraged the teenager to keep crawling. As day broke and they climbed through the forest, the full scale and planning behind the massacre became apparent. They were co collecting the dead bodies and they put them on the trucks, on the trucks or tractors, I don't remember now. And the tractors, uh, tractors um, were going somewhere, I don't know, remember, where, probably to mass graves. After the war, the international effort to find and identify the missing thousands began. Amongst the dead, Nejad's father and uncle. I know for my un uncle that uh, remains that his remains were found in four mass graves. So they wanted to, to hide it and uh, excavate them and uh, rebury them again. And because of that, they've bro broken their bodies. I wondered whether people living around the dam site now would know what happened there. Many of them probably don't dare to, to talk, to tell anything about it. Why not? But they have fear for their lives. If they talked about what happened here? Yeah, of course. Fear of their lives from whom? But from those who committed the, the, the crime and who who supported the crime and who approved the crime. And do some of them still live around here, do you think? Yes, of course. Each gravestone in the vast Potachari memorial to the genocide victims bears the same year of death, 1995. The recovery of remains has been painstakingly slow, Every year on the July anniversary, more men are buried here. Sometimes a bone fragment is all that's been identified. The International Court in The Hague has judged six senior Serb figures guilty of genocide in Srebrenica. The former Bosnian Serb general Ratko Mladic is awaiting judgment. Saliha Osmanovic testified against him and others. In a row of four graves at Potocari lie her husband, her eldest son, her father-in-law and her brother-in-law. Ja slušam neki veći mlada dodi kaže on nije muslimanska zemlja gdje ste bošnjaci pokopali. Pa kako nije muslimanska zemlja kad je srpska? Treba joj ništa ne pokriti i pobacat. Ako političiš u Panja Luci, nemoj potačarna. Nama komši vam ništa ne čini, evo men, što zavađa narod džaba. A few 
miles from Srebrenica, as the primary school day begins, education has become politicized. Here in Nova Kasaba, these Muslim children are now being educated separately from their Serb peers. Their parents pulled them out of mainstream school and set up their own in an Islamic center. They claim they were forced to do so because in subjects from geography to history to literature, even to what their language is called, their children's Bosniak heritage was being excluded. Do you believe that this is a deliberate decision by the politicians, the people, the officials running the education system in Republika Srpska to make you feel unwelcome? Oni radi na, na tome da se mi svi asimiliramo u ovu sredinu i da mi da ti do, jednostavno do sad i više da ne, ne možeš to da, da izdrži da se vratiš. Nejad's daughters are still too young for these issues to apply. But with Bosniak politicians ramping up the rhetoric against their rivals' education policies, he and Elvisa worry what their children will be taught in future if they stay in Republika Srpska. Srebrenica's municipal assembly now has more Serb councillors than Bosniaks. The mayor's party is ruling in coalition with Serbs and Muslims. In the opposition, a Serb who's been in politics since the war days. He's the local president of Radovan Karadic's former party and also the town's secondary school director. Bosniaks have said to us, if people would recognise and call it a genocide, then reconciliation could happen. But because that's not happening, it's impossible. Do you think it was a genocide and what do you think about that viewpoint? Mislim da su Amerikanci i Englezi namjerno presudili u korist genocida ne poštujući termin genocid. Umjer riječi i stan riječi vidite šta znači genocid. A se pridržavate toga onda ne možete uklopiti te zločine u Srebrenicu koji se desili, ne možete uklopiti u genocid. A ako ćete da uklopite to u genocid, onda uklopite i 92. i 41. godinu i 1918. godinu i sve ono što su Srbi nastradali. Zapravo vi radite, vaši sudove politički, haški i međunarodni, radite na razjednjavanju Bosne i Hercegovine. Blaming international meddling for the possible breakup of Bosnia Herzegovina is tried and tested political discourse here. President Dodik regularly threatens a referendum on secession. His mayor in Srebrenica isn't averse either. Would you like to see Republika Srpska cede from Bosnia Herzegovina? A ako bi bolji život bio da se e, jednostavno odvoji Republika Srpska od federacije i da onaj ko želi da živi u Republici Srpskoj, da li to bio Bošnjak ili Hrvat ili Srbi ili ostali, da tu ostane da živi, a oni isto tako koji žele da žive u federaciji, da li to Srbi ili ostali narodi, e, e, i ako, ako je to funkcionalnije i ako to može na miran način da suradi, ja, ja sam za takvu soluciju. Before the war, Serbs made up just over half the population of this area. Now, Republika Srpska is 80% Serb. After the war, efforts were made to encourage Bosniaks back to Srebrenica, and this family lives in a block specially built for returnees with international finance. But Nejad and Elvisa told me they already know Muslims who've recently packed up and left again because of the political situation. Elvisa would like to follow them. Nejad's surviving family never understood his need to go back and live in Srebrenica. I remember the words of my mother as well. If you want to go to Srebrenica, <laughs> you can go wherever you want, but don't go there, please. If you leave, who will be the winner? In, in that case, I think, in that case, uh, the genocide would pay off. Those who committed such horror, they, they would win. Nejad believes the scale of the crimes cannot be compared, but Serbs also lost their lives in the war and there are memorials to the 3,000 Serb soldiers and civilians killed across this area over three years. 
Most people we spoke to, whether Serb or Bosniak, were keen to try to forget the past and look to the future. But for 22 years, Nejad has lived with a burden. The memory of the 8,000 souls who didn't have his luck. The burden of being a survivor of genocide. We had a normal country. I can say that uh, uh, hatred, that uh, nationalistic conversation can take us to the war and after that to the, to the killing. Very often I ask myself where we are going now because we I, I, I see very bad things in Europe. Nejad's main concern is closer to home. Those uh, who had uh, their hands bloody, if they, if they are, uh, come one day and uh, ask for forgiveness, I think that it, uh, it wouldn't be a problem for us to, to extend our hands. Do you think they ever will? True reconciliation looks perhaps almost as far off as ever, particularly with genocide being denied in the very place where it's judged to have happened. In the end, only the living can have a say on whether a country built on bloodshed will truly wash away the enmities of war. Pa ne mogu istoriju, ne mogu, ne mogu ništa. U programu za, za, prosve, za osnovno obrazovanje u Republike Srpskoj, znači sve, sve srpsko, srpske šume, srpske vode, srpska, samo što je, ne znam, možda su izrak, ona je, sve srpsko. Do you believe that this is a deliberate decision by the politicians, the people, the officials running the education system in Republika Srpska to make you feel unwelcome? Oni radi na, na tome da se mi svi asimiliramo u, u ovu sredinu i da mi da ti do, jednostavno do sad i više da ne, ne možeš to da, da izdrži da se vratiš. Nejad's daughters are still too young for these issues to apply. But with Bosniak politicians ramping up the rhetoric against their rivals' education policies, he and Elvisa worry what their children will be taught in future if they stay in Republika Srpska. Srebrenica's municipal assembly now has more Serb councillors than Bosniaks. The mayor's party is ruling in coalition with Serbs and Muslims. In the opposition, a Serb who's been has judged six senior Serb figures guilty of genocide in Srebrenica. The former Bosnian Serb general Ratko Mladic is awaiting judgment. Saliha Osmanovic testified against him and others. In a row of four graves at Potocari lie her husband, her eldest son, her father-in-law and her brother-in-law. Nema ih. Poginuli, imala dva sina i muža, nema nikoga. Nema ni čerke, ni unučeta, sama sam ostala. Ja sam išla u Hag tamo. Za mene to bilo važno. To je bilo, to je se desilo. Ja sam išla protiv mladića. I to je za mene veliko. Da se sazna istina da je to bilo. Da ne može da bude da nije bilo. Kad je to bilo. Ja slušam neki veći, Milara Dodi kaže, ovo nije muslimanska zemlja gdje ste bošnjaci pokopali. Pa kako nije muslimanska zemlja, kada je srpska? Treba joj ništa ne pokuti i pobacati. Pa ako političi u Panja Luci, nemoj potočarna. Nama komši vam ništa ne čini, evo meni. Što zavađa narod džaba? Hmm.